WYCF, your local view on WVBK-CA, serving Manchester, Londonderry, Vermont, and South Charlestown, New Hampshire, and WVBQ-LP, serving Charlestown, New Hampshire, and Rockingham, Vermont. Coming up tonight on YCN, a Grafton garage gets burnt after a wood stove ignites a fire. 50 pine trees in Newport are set to come down in spring. Hear why. And we have highlights from last night's Woodstock versus Hartford boys basketball game. With more news, sports, and weather, stay tuned. It's time for YCN, your local view. Now your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region. News, sports, weather, public affairs, and all that is happening in our area. The YCN News Hour, your local view. Good evening, I'm David Carmichael. An automotive garage in Grafton caught fire after a wood stove in the rear section of the garage ignited the flames. When firefighters responded to the call, flames were six to eight feet high, Firefighters were able to contain the flames and salvage some of the garage, sparing complete destruction. However, the back wall of the building is charred and will need repair. Hartford residents gathered last night to hear board members discuss three key issues that will appear on town meeting day in March. The select board and the school board proposed an $8.85 million bond for the construction of new athletic facilities. The town also assembled a committee to issue a $5.2 million bond to renovate the town hall. Town members appeared to be open to both proposals, which would raise individuals' taxes. However, the third proposal gave the town authority to impose a 1% local opinion tax on meals, hotel rooms, and alcohol raised more of a controversy among residents. The amendment was designed to raise money for the local government, placing the tax burden on tourists, but members of the committee reminded the local government that they too eat out and purchase alcohol in the community more frequently than tourists and that they will be affected by these tax increases. As the school board season approaches the March deadline, the Cornish School Board 2013-2014 budget proposal is projected to vary greatly depending on the unknowns of Governor Maggie Hassan's state budget and the lingering effects from federal budget issues. To illustrate the uncertainty of both state and federal funding, the town of Cornish could see their taxes rise as little as 39 cents per $1,000 of real property valuation to $14.64 per $1,000 of valuation. The board is scheduled to meet again next Monday at the Cornish Elementary School to further work on the budget. The Claremont City Council meeting tomorrow night will shed some light on how the city can encourage entrepreneurial growth while maintaining the city's historic feel. City officials in a Boston-based urban design company have teamed up in an attempt to create a more vibrant downtown area. Also an update on the new community center which is slated to open the third week of February will be discussed during the meeting. Vermont has appointed Robert Sand, a former Windsor County State Attorney, to serve as coordinator to introduce alternative sentencing programs for repeat drunk driving offenses. The new position was created in an attempt by Governor Peter Shumlin to improve alcohol abuse treatments and reduce the state's prison population. Shumlin reminded Vermont residents that drinking under the influence remains of the greatest killers on Vermont highways. In his position, Sand will target repeat DUI offenders and provide people with addictions with treatment alternatives. The head of the Valley Regional Hospital in Claremont stepped down due to personal issues just two months before she was set to retire. Valley Regional President and CEO Claire Bowen announced the decision via email on Friday. Bowen's abrupt departure was unspecified and only described as a personal situation that required her full attention. A consulting firm will be coming on board today or tomorrow to help run the hospital while they search for Bowen's replacement. The hospital has been in search for a new president since last March when Bowen announced her retirement. The hospital expects the position to be filled by early March. 52 pine trees that are dead or dying on Corbin Road in Newport have been tagged and will be coming down in March or April. A civil engineer from the New Hampshire Department of Transportation said that each of the 52 trees were hazardous and could come down at any moment. The issue became increasingly apparent with the recent storms that have been blown through our area. Corbin Road was shut down during Hurricane Sandy, fearing that limbs and branches could cause damage as a result of high winds. After the break, we'll open our minds to the Hood Museum of Art with their executive director, Michael Taylor. 
The YCN News Hour continues in a moment.